Center. Will we please give them a big round of applause? So glad you have joined us. And we know that we are coming to you live on the Hope of Prisons Facebook Live page from watching from all over the world. We just want to say hello to you and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Can we give them a big, gigantic round of applause? So listen, we had a train that was going to come tonight, right? But uh, he wasn't able to make it. He had to cancel. So you got me. So the benefits of being stuck with me for tonight, we're not going to have the normal 90 minutes. We're going to make this a 60-minute huddle up. How's that? But in those 60 minutes, I'm going to share with you some fantastic things that are coming down. Is that Jack Battle? Oh, man, time out. Just cut. Time out. What's going on, man? How you doing? Man, it's good to see you. Right here. I didn't recognize you in the hat there, man. So good to see you. My bad. Can we go back live? I'm sorry for everyone watching all over the world because I know if you're in Germany, Australia, or Switzerland, white you have no idea who, who Jack Battle is. But I do. So anyway, we're gonna uh, we're gonna share with you some um, some exciting things that are coming down the pipe that I want to make sure that everybody in this room is a part of. But before we do that, is there anybody in the room that has any? magnificent testimonies that you would like to share with us. Something God has done uh, in your life that is remarkable, that you want to share and encourage some other people. Uh, if you're online, please make sure you drop that inside the chat room. For those of you who are uh, on Facebook Live, make sure that you uh, put it in there and Chad is going to be monitoring those things and call Bond. Was there something you had you want to share? And I'm make my way over to you. Okay. By the grace of you can God, take it, man. I know you. By the grace of God, I was given the patience and the capability of actually finishing the Coursera Google Learn class that I got to do through you guys. Right. And graduated my course or Project Manager three course. First time ever. Oh man, that is awesome! Can you give him a big, gigantic round of applause for that? That is that is so awesome, man. So very very proud. So where are you going to go with it from here? Because I know there's some other courses you want to dig back up in that. Okay. That's good, man. That is good. Give them a hand for that, man. And those, those Coursera classes, uh, they're available, right? And we have scholarships for those, right? So you don't have to pay anything for it. There's tremendous value uh, in that. So if anybody interested in taking some of those go with Google classes, be just like do what Call Bond did and make sure you're taking advantage of that. It is something I want to say um, that, uh, and I'm going to just go completely off strip because I can, but he said something a little while ago. He was talking about, you know, that God gave him the patience, right? I gave him the patience. And it was something that came up in our, in our Bible study yesterday because we have Bible study here every Monday evening. Just a group of people. This is open for anybody wants to um, wants to participate. But but uh, I was reading in Galatians five twenty two, and it was talking about the fruit of the spirit. How many people know I'm talking about in that passage of scripture? Right, it's the fruit of the spirit, and the fruit of the spirit is love, patience, kindness, gentleness, long suffering, meekness, self control. Right, and um, we were we were we were talking about. Um, when we, because those are the fruit of the spirit we're supposed to walk in. So to walk in the fruit of the spirit, all of those, it's like nine of them, wrapped up in one, but the nine of them, right? And um, it was a young lady there was saying, well, I've been praying to God and asking him to, to give me more patience. And I was, I was praying to God and asking him to, you know, help me get through this long suffering. I was praying to God and asking him, help me be more loving and more kind and all the fruit of the spirit. And what we, what, what I shared with is that when, when we pray to God and ask God to give us more patience, it's not like God waves a magic wand and say, zing, you're patient, or zing, you're kind now, or zing, you're loving. What happens is he allows situations to come in your life where you got to practice patience. Are you following me? Right? So you get, he allows situations to come in your life where you have to practice loving being kind and long suffering. So I commend you for learning a lesson and getting through that because you said God had given you the grace to be patient and getting through that. So that is so good. We're going to open up to other people in the room. Anything that you'd like to share with us? Look, I got the, I'm like a one man band here tonight. So 
it's only been two months since I graduated. And when I started the program, I was sleeping in a tent in my mother's backyard two months ago. Um, I struggled for about a little short time to find a job. I got work. Uh, I got a job making pretty good money, $27 an hour. And um, give me a hand for that, man. And it was crazy hours. I was working. Hey, Jack. What's up, brother? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I was working crazy hours, 12, 14 hours a day, seven days a week. And it was good money. I was bringing in money, but my body was just falling apart. But because of Hope for Prisoners and the blueprint and everything just following what Greg Ketter taught us, Ketterer, um, I was able to every night make that blueprint and stay focused, even mm. though I was working so hard and get my vision, vivid vision going to the point to where now I'm making $100 an hour. Um, a cons consultation fees for 100 bucks an hour. I'm not making enough yet, but thank you, John. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, man. Give him a hand for that, man. Very proud. What an incredible testimony that is, right? How encouraging is that? And as he was sitting over here saying he was doing $27 an hour, you were working 10 hours. I was doing the math in my head. My goodness, seven days a week. If you want to make a donation, go to www. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Yes, testimonies, anything God is working in life, something that is... You know, God has shown up in your life, and we're going to come over here. I love it. And I'm going to open it up to those of you in Casa Grande. Time out. And for those of you in Casa Grande that completed the workshop last week, maybe it's something that you want to share with this group that that just really hit home with you, that resonated with you, uh, and something we can all get excited about. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Rosie, and I'm new here at Hope for Prisoners. I started coming here maybe about three, four weeks ago. Uh, I did five years, so I got out on the 8th. So uh, the 8th of February. It's been hard. Um, I went on my first interview, didn't get it. They emailed me right away. So I'm not giving you guys bad news. I'm just saying that you're going to go through the struggles. You're going to see, you're going to hear the no's. You're going to hear people making comments. Oh, a felon. I've been looking for apartments. What? A felons click. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Because if you believe in Jesus Christ and you know that he saved you wow. and you know that he's taking you through your journey, he's brought you out of prison, brought you out of jail. If you know these things, then all of this is already his. Mm. So he's going to open those doors for you according to his will. So be patient because I'm that's being right. patient. I'm here. So if you're dedicated and you're here, that's all we need to be. And give her a hand for that. Good job. Good job. You know, part of our exciting news is I'm going to share with you this evening something that's happening uh, next month as far as like employment is concerned. So um, we uh, I can't wait to share it to you because it is going to be good. There's my friend. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good. Open it up. Any questions, the comments, anyone like to share any testimony before opening up in prayer and then go over the Casa Grande because I want to find out from them because they just completed the workshop last week. And for those of you who are in this room, you remember those little nuggets that got dropped in the room with you? Some of those things you can around, we can go inside Casa Grande. We're gonna, we're gonna see what it is that, uh, that they uh, took out of last week. So Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus, God, we just wanna thank you for being the awesome, incredible God that you are. Father, we thank you for every move that you make in our life. God, we thank you for the lessons that we have learned god we thank you for not only things you've done in the past father but the things that you are going to do uh in the future i lift up every man and woman that's underneath the sound of my voice god and i ask you to give them clarity of thought give them a desire to learn and grow uh closer to you we love you we worship you god and pray you this match this prayer in the name of your son jesus christ in jesus name we say amen. amen all right why don't we go over to casa grande and that's what we want to find out I don't know who's over there. Is that Darby over there? Why are you sitting in the back of the room, Darbs? Maybe you can wake up, make your way up. Maybe it's somebody inside Casa Grande that has learned something last week that really, really resonated. And don't get shy with me because I will start calling you out by name. Going once. Why are you all up beneath the table? You think I can't see you? <laughs> Going hey, once. I'm unmuted. I'm sorry, Darbs. Well, you tell her. She's unmuted. She's unmuted. Go ahead, raise your hand. Okay, come on. <laughs> Thank you, Darby. Would you let them know that they're on uh, like live TV around the world? What's going on, young man? Let me let me let me tell you before you uh, before you get going, right? 
and I shared this in the class before, some of the most successful people that I see uh, that go through our program are the people that after they complete, I see them walking through the door. And I think that you must have walked through this door three or four times, and it's only Monday night, right? So I, I'm, I'm just right. I'm saying that you're going to have an incredible future ahead of you. What was that one thing that you want to share with us that resonated and hit home? Uh, I would have to say open-mindedness, actually. Yes. Uh, I actually went into the program closed-minded. I was hesitant at first. I ain't gonna lie. I talked a lot of crap about the program. <laughs> and uh, before the first, actually before the first day even came to an end, I was like, like in awe. Uh, the program has so much to offer. It was like somebody just set up the most expensive jewel right in front of the, wow. in front of the classroom. It was like, hey, just take as much as you want. It's free. It's a gift from God, you know. Uh, all the teachers, the, the staff, the, the the program leaders, they were all helpful, and, and the fundamentals they were teaching was was just like special. Uh, I learned a lot. Of, I even broke down one time uh, because it it got me in touch with my with some feelings that I haven't been in touch with in a long time. Mm. And uh, so I would just say open mindedness and awareness, actually, uh, of the things and the possibilities that I can achieve is really what I got out of it the most and uh, not judging others for uh, what they got going on because you never know. You could find yourself in that situation too. And I have a lot of times, but just mostly open-mindedness and awareness really. Um, I'm really grateful for the program you got, John. And uh, I thank you and your staff for everything you've done for me, for real. Good deal. Give me a hand for that, man. And you know what? Guess what? It ain't over. We are only just beginning. Anybody else over at Casa Grande or in this room want to share something, right? Some nugget that you've gotten out of the Hope for Prisons that's helping you to be successful uh, on this day. Go on once. And if nobody jumps up, man, something in the milk ain't white. Go on once. Go in twice. We have somebody. Oh, oh, Colleen's right behind you, John. Okay, <laughs> we're going to go with Colleen, then we'll make way back over to him. Hi, Colleen. Step up, tell everybody your name, and what is that one little jewel that you got out of Hope for Prisons? Honestly, um, I don't know if I have any jewels. I just honestly wanted to thank you guys. You um, know exactly what you and Darby and everybody at Hope did for me. I came in to this program just with a huge chip on my shoulder i didn't like anybody and trust me but i didn't want to do anything and um, i think it definitely reflected my attitude and when i had some one-on-one -on -one time with yourself and darby and the people that you put me in communication with i really did feel supported and cared about and it did everything for my attitude and my motivation. And um, I, you know, you kept me from the yard. I was about to get rolled up and you single-handedly made sure that didn't happen. And now I'm going home making uh, the more mo most money I've ever made outside of sales. And uh, I'm really excited for you guys to come to Northern Nevada and I hope to be a part of that because um, I know it really sucks going home not having the stability of the building not that you guys have here in Las Vegas. So I'm really excited about the future of that up north. But I just wanted to, to say thank you. And I've made some really, really beautiful connections in uh, this room and in that one. So I just yeah. want to say thank you. Well, Colleen. One second, though. Can we say where she's going to her job up north? I'm going to the first class vending. They hired me as a data analyst. Woo! That is so good. Colleen, we are so very uh, proud of you. Uh, and you kind of give us credit, but I have to give you the credit because you put in the work, right? You you, you, you did have to make an attitude adjustment because I remember at one point I wanted to fight you like you were a man. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> well, 
But however, <laughs> right, it, it was your attitude adjustment. You know, we talked about how a person's attitude determines their altitude, right? You got that really, really bad attitude. You ain't going to go no place in life, but you make that attitude adjustment. You begin to soar uh, like the eagle. And it's just, it's an honor and a privilege to us to be able to see where you came from, right? And you made those adjustments and that attitude is, has you soaring like a superstar. And I'm just believing that as you continue on this journey, you're soaring up north uh, into uh, first class Bindi, and you made us very, very proud, right? The employer took a shot on you. We told him to give you a shot. And not only have you gone in, uh, gotten up in there and just went to work, but you've gotten up in there and have excelled. So thank you so very much. And please know that you uh, continue to open up the doors for the other people that we want to go into first class vending and maybe some other people that are in this room or in that room or watching online uh, will have the chance to stand before us as one day and say that they're making more money than they ever have before in their, in their entire life. Can we give her another big gigantic round of applause? Hey, I saw another hand go up over here with something. To, oh, in the back over here. My bad. My bad. It got me rolling around the room like old school Geraldo Rivera. Wait, I'm sorry, it might be off. Hello? Hey, Brian Layfield to Federico. Hi, by the way. Uh, we were at uh, Inside last year in August together. It really helped me out. Who was it you saying hello to? Federico. Oh, Fred Federico. Wright. Okay. He actually gave me an Alcoholic Anonymous book that he signed and uh, just wanted to say hi. Okay. But uh, so I've been ignoring my Bible a lot and um, been putting it up on the top right shelf and everything. And uh, the other day, um, I was doing something, uh, just kind of like organizing, organizing, and um, it fell off and hit me in the head and opened up at mm. the exact same part of the book where it wow. was explaining exactly what I was doing, and I was just like, wow. I need to start paying more attention, yeah. and you've actually helped with that in the Hope for Prisoners. Uh, you guys are such a powerful organization that um, you guys have made sure that I've had a shelter over my head over the past two months, and I just yeah. wanted to say thank you. Oh, man, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much for sharing. He said his Bible hit him upside the head, and... Remember that song, God is trying to tell you something. <laughs> tell us your name. What is that testimony? Something you want to share with us? Uh, my name is Austin. Um, I graduated the Hope for Prisoners program on February 17th. Uh, when I started the program, I kind of started like uh, Rick did. I came out and had a chip on my shoulder and everything and like with Colleen and I didn't think that it was going to be anything, but mm -hmm. when I saw that it was free, people were willing to help me regardless of my past. Um, I, on my second day, I came back with an open mind and I've just been receiving blessings from God every day since. That's right. I went to a job interview and they were like, well, we'll just skip the paper process. Just come and we'll have an interview right now. And when mm. we got to the part where he said, uh, can you pass a background check? I told him, I said, uh, I said, I am a convicted felon. I said, I'm a graduate of the Hope for Prisoners program here in Nevada. And we went through the interview and everything. And he was like, OK, well, I just need to let you know that uh, let you know right now we don't hire felons. And I said, OK, well, I appreciate your time. And, you know, God bless you and you have a great day. And I was turned around to walk out and he said, you know what? He's like something just told me to ask you. He said, uh, <laughs> he said, do you have any questions for me? And I said, it's not really a question. It's more of a, a request. And I learned this during the the huddle up that we had with our friends from the yeah. from the Nevada yes, Highway yes, Patrol. Yes, yes. And uh, I just told him, I said, the only thing I ask you is, I said, judge me for the man who stands in front of you, not for the name on the paper and the charges in my background. And he said, you know what? I'm really going to listen to that. And he's like, I appreciate you. Have a good day. And they called me today and asked me to come back for a secondary. <laughs> Man, that is awesome. Ain't that good? Man, oh, man, oh, man. Somebody else had a hand up over here. I am making my way around. This is like testimony night, man. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, tell us your name. And <clears throat> Yep. Uh, my name is Franklin. Um, I joined the Hope for Prisoners program. Look at the camera uh, right there. Say hi to uh, I joined the Hope for Prisoners program like uh, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I learned a lot, but one of the main things that stuck out to me was um, goal setting and setting realistic goals and those 24-hour goals. And um, it just showed me how to um, categorize and um, be responsible and um, don't let nothing get in my way or stand in my way from accomplishing those goals. So 
for that, amongst many other things, I want to thank you. Man, you're welcome. Give him a hand for that, man. Man, oh man, oh man. It's always a it's always an honor and a privilege to 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 see people because you know we go into prisons all the time and work with people and we're out in Florence McClure and we're out at Southern Desert. And uh, I bumped into this young man on the yard at Southern Desert, right? Was back in that unit. Was that like 11 B? And we went in and was having conversations. And the guy said he was getting out after X amount of years in prison. I'll let him tell that. So after X amount of years in prison, and I was telling him, listen, make sure that when you get released, that, you know, that one of the things that people miss the mark, right, is, is that they wind up going other places and don't come here first. Right. And don't come here first. And 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 but he didn't do that. Right. He came here the day he got out, the man of his word. So now we have to keep our word because I told him we was going to be able to help him out. We're going to help him out, man. And it's just an honor to see you here, man. Looking forward. Give him another hand for that, please. <clears throat> yes, sir. I just have a quick question. Yes. You brought you, you brought the. The. You brought that whole thing inside to Casa Grande? Uh, not only Casa Grande, but Florence McClure and Southern Desert. And, and, then we and wait a minute, wait a minute. The Nevada Department of Corrections held their graduation here? Yes. Yeah. Did you hear that? <laughs> yes. Nevada Department of Corrections, corrections officers have held their graduation here. Um, yes. So Casa Grande, anything else you guys want to uh, share? Before I started dropping these jewels, remember we're gonna have a 60 minute huddle up tonight, but I'm gonna share with you some incredible things we're gonna be doing during the month of April, which is the month of second chances. And I think that when I share a couple of those things, you guys wanna just get excited and run all around the room because it's all about creating opportunities for formerly incarcerated and incarcerated people who um, are uh, back out in the community. Um, and it's a month of second chances. So anything else in this room? Anything online? We got, let me make my way over here. And you got to be careful because this girl, she might start the preaching. <laughs> Chad, she start preaching real good. Take the bucket and run it around the room. Tell us your name and my tell us what is it is you want to share. My name is Tamisha. And I just, I'm here to see Miss Carolyn and also attend to the huddle up. I was incarcerated for five years and I got out June 2021. I really wasn't sure about hope for prisoners and people was telling me, I heard it in Florence McClure. I'm like, no, nah, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go. So a couple of months down the line after I was released, I, I told myself, okay, I'm ready for hope for prisoners. So I came in in March last year, registered, went to the uh, workshop. I got so much information from there, it got me where I'm at now. So they um, hope for prisoners, I graduated April 14th last year. So I was coming back nagging Miss Carolyn about bus cards and paying my rent and all this because <laughs> hope for prisoners also got me a place to stay Come on. and a job. So being me, I kept on walking off the jobs. I'm like, no, this not for me, this not for me. Giving Miss Carolyn and John Ponder a headache. I'm a big, I'm the biggest headache. So wow. they finally gave me. <laughs> so last kidding. year in September, I got baptized and um, I just turned my life over to God. <laughs> I'm a God fearing woman. So now they placed me in August, they placed me with Precision Air in the call center. So I'm like, well, it's too far. And I'm, just, I'm trying to find all the excuses, but I endured it. I endured it. Um, I got promoted two months ago as a dispatcher. So I'm dispatching now. <clears throat> Thanks for Hope for Prisoner. They encouraged me. And Thursday, I bought a brand new car. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> and it's just so much hope. For, I'm just thankful and grateful that Hope for Prisoners just gave me an opportunity because it is another opportunity for me and i'm taking full advantage of it Come you on. know and i just want to thank god and i want to thank hope for prisoners and i also want to thank you oh you're welcome <laughs> you are welcome give her a hand for that that is so <laughs> awesome she says she bought her a brand new car let me find out you go outside there and she got like a lambo <laughs> or something in the parking lot it's a nice car. it is it is, it is. So very proud of you, girl. Keep up the good work. So in this room, any other testimonies, comments, anything anybody would like to make? 
Uh, okay, we're going to go uh, in Casa Grande inside Nevada Department of Corrections. I see a hand up. Is that Sierra? I think I have everybody to stand up on your feet. No, I'm just kidding. But give it, tell us your name, Sierra, and uh, what is that you'd like to share with us? Hi, uh, my name is Sierra, and I completed the Hope for Prisoners workshop um, last month. And I think it's a great program. I think it really gives people a sense of community. Uh, I do hear a lot of things, both good and bad, about Hope for Prisoners. And I think it's really important for people to understand that in order for you to uh, succeed and thrive in a program as Hope for Prisoners, you actually, you still have to put forth some effort. Yes. And you do still have to... Yeah, you still have to like try and not just to see all the barriers because like here we do have barriers we're at Casa Grande but that doesn't mean that there aren't avenues that you can take in order to succeed in those things that you want to do with Hope for Prisoners so I think it's just important for people to understand that you give what you put in so mm -hmm. if you want the work and you or you put in the work and you want these uh thingies then you're going to get them if you put the work in but if you just want them and then you expect people to give things to you they don't just hand it out on a silver platter so remember it's the work you put in that you get out that is so good. Give her a hand for that. And Sierra, I don't think that I could have said it any better myself because remember, you put garbage in, you get garbage out, right? Put garbage in, and I'm just going to leave it right there. Uh, anything else, anybody else in this room? Something, testimonies, or oh, you're welcome. I tell people all the time, if you, know, if you um, have achieved some things, right, and you're six months into, don't thank me right now. Thank me 18 months from now when you're soaring like superstars, right? And, you know, achieving all those different things because the work just begun. It's, it, we, we've just begun. The job is, you know, it, it, you know, all that stuff has just begun. But when you get to that place in 18 months from now and, and you're literally soaring like a superstar, then you can say thank you then. And then you turn around and make a donation. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I would not say that. So, uh, so I'm going to share with you guys uh, some things that we are doing in the month of April. That is is phenomenal. And as we know that April is the month of second chances, right? It's it's a national thing where we carve out time and space for uh, formerly incarcerated people and incarcerated people to give them honor where honors do, right? And each year we always um, um, want to highlight the success stories of people who have done you know 10, 15, 20 years in prison been out five, 10, 15 years, and not only have they never gone back, but today they're living levels of life that most people only dream of, right? And the reason why we wanna highlight the stories like that, because uh, far too often do you hear the stories of the dude that came home from NDOC, got out three months, six months out, caught another case, stole a car, ex-felon possession of firearm, and that hits the six o'clock news. Right. And when that hits the six o'clock news, then it kills the narrative that we're, we're trying to um, uh, change that formerly incarcerated people can come home and be be um, be productive. Right. And not go back. So throughout the, the month of April, we're going to be highlighting those stories, not only here from our local state, but all across America. In my 12 years, 13 years of, of doing this, I have rubbed the elbows with some of the rock stars in our community, some of the people that mentor me. And I say this very humbly, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of John Ponders all over the country. People who are in their communities giving back in major ways, and they're formerly incarcerated people, thousands of them. So we want to highlight some of those people during the month of second chances and put it out there uh, in the atmosphere so that people can see. So the first thing we're going to be doing in the month of second chances is going to be on April 1st. Everybody say April. I'm sorry, April 4th. Say April 4th. April 4th. I didn't hear nobody in Casa Grande say April 4th. April 4th. Say April 4th. That's what I'm talking about. But I see some dudes and their lips wasn't moving, but it's okay. So on April 4th, it's a Tuesday night, so we're taking our Tuesday night huddle up out in the park, right? We're going to have a huddle up in the park. I'm flying in a formerly incarcerated person who's going to be there speaking, but in addition to that, we're going to have barbecue, we have jumpy houses, we have dunk tanks, and what we're doing is we're inviting you out with some other formerly incarcerated people, and we, we want you to 
uh, invite your family. Bring your kids out into the park. And for those of you who are there in Casa Grande, uh, we want to extend you that invitation too. And yes, your kids can come. Yes, your family can come. And it has nothing to do with them being on some approved visitors list. <laughs> so April 4th will be that day. It's going to be lots of fun. We're going to have you know, some men and women from the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. We can have parole and probation out there. And we can just be people in uh, for the evening, huddling up. Carolyn Willis is going to make some uh, barbecue something that she does. And we're going to eat. We're going to have fun on April 4th. And then the next thing that we're going to be doing, I want everybody to say April 12th. April 12th. No, say it like me. Say April 12th. April 12th. Looking at the people in Casa Grande because it's going to be open up to you too. Say April 12th. Darby, do we have me on mute? Because I don't hear nothing. Wait, Darby, you in the back there? Because I got to, I got Evan, please help me out. All right, so April 12th. That's what I'm talking about. So on, 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 on April the 12th, from 10 o'clock in the morning until 2 p.m., we're going to have a second chance hiring event right here at our location. And, 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 and we've invited some employers who I instructed them that do not take a space up in my building if you're only paying $13, $14 an hour because that's not for our people. Do not come, right? We're looking for those. 17, 20, like he said, $27 an hour, because we want to make sure that people can earn in sustainable ways where they can take care of themselves and be able to take care of their family. So on that day, April 12th, from 10 until noon, we're going to invite you to come out to interact with some of those employers. There's going to be vocational trainers here, some of the people that we partner with. Let me just tell you a few of the employers that are going to be here. Um, UPS has jumped on board. And yes, they do hire formerly incarcerated people, partner through Hope for Prisoners. In addition to UPS, Republic Services, the garbage come. Teamsters Union, they're in the house and they hire Hope for Prisoners graduates. In addition to that, we have uh, a, uh, Extreme Manufacturing, they're gonna be in the house, Cole Manufacturing, they're gonna be in the house. Kroger Foods, who has this big gigantic warehouse, that is part of the for prisoners and they, they, they hire formerly incarcerated people. And it's probably 30 other major employers that are gonna be here. So we're opening it up to people that are part of Hope for Prisons. You may be uh, uh, unemployed or underemployed. We wanna make sure that you can um, come and take advantage of this. And yes, those of you who are in Casa Grande, absolutely 100% you're gonna be able to come and attend and have a conversation with those uh, second chance employers, right? And that is the month of second chances. Can, can we get a hand for that? Woo! Yes, sir. I'm sorry, 10 until 2 p.m., right? We're gonna have other service providers there as well. Like take for instance, the child support people are coming out. So if you owe child support, and those of you in Casa Grande, if you owe child support, we want to make sure you be able to get connected with them. I know America First Credit Union uh, is coming out. Uh, there is the, the young lady, um, Katrina, who was here uh, at the huddle. She is with the, the Nevada Homeless Alliance. Yeah, she's coming. She's going to be downstairs. And there are lots and lots of resources that, you know, that agency has. So it's going to be a great day. I know that the employee MV from Dieter is going to be here as well. And there's a lot of supportive services. And again, because it's the month of second chances, and we want to open up these second chance opportunities for you. Uh, and the next event that we're going to have, it's a, it's a, it's a dinner that we're having uh, over at the Resorts World. And it's our annual fundraiser. And I can't even tell you what we're raising funds for yet, but it's something that bigger than what we can even talk about in this room. 
But we're very honored that flying in for this event is a young lady by the name of Alice Johnson. And some of you may have heard of Alice Johnson and seen her on TV. But Alice Johnson was, was the grandma who uh, was from Tennessee. And she uh, got locked up for a first-time drug offense. And they gave her life without the possibility of parole. First time drunk events, state of Tennessee. And they gave her life without the possibility of parole. And after completing 23 years of that life sentence, she got up on the radar of Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian took it to the White House. And the year that President Trump pardoned me, he also pardoned Alice Johnson. <clears throat> so when Alice Johnson came home from prison, she got out in the community and doing just like what I'm doing, not forgetting about the people behind the walls. And she has gone on this tear all over this country, or even over this world, uh, fighting for the, the, the injustices that happen to people that we're in the same situation as her. So she is going to be here uh, for that uh, second chance uh, opportunity. And the following morning, we're going to be going in Florence McClure to meet with the ladies because the event's going to be streamlined. And we might be bringing Kim Kardashian with us. I told my wife to give me a pass. My No. <laughs> I am just kidding. Chad, I just realized she's probably watching right now. No, baby, but listen, them, them just jokes. But it's going to be an awesome opportunity. And then we're going to have a second chance graduation in the month on April the 28th. Um, I believe that on that day, we're going to be graduating probably 55 people uh, at the headquarters of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And I know that that room is going to be filled up with employers, lots of uh, elected officials. And I'm, I'm working, I'm waiting for confirmation uh, to have a very, 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 very famous person come out and speak at that graduation. I don't want to drop it out there right now because I know we're like it's all over the world. But I can tell you it is going to be an absolute doozy. Month of check and chances starting on April 1st, going to run throughout the course of the month, huddle up in the park on April the 4th, uh, the second chance hiring event uh, on April the 12th, uh, the, uh, the fundraising dinner on the 19th and graduation is going to be on the 28th. Everybody got those dates? So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you guys back the rest of the evening. I know there's lots of pizza uh, that's in there. Um, and thank you guys so much for coming out. I just, you know, yeah, we gonna we don't cut it. I'm gonna do what Carolyn did a couple of uh, couple of weeks ago. She didn't know she didn't know I knew anything about that. Or you know, yeah, she did that. But listen, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We're back up Tuesday. Make sure you contact with your case manager. If you're inside Casa Grande, connect with Darby. I know there's lots of you that are in that room uh, that are going to be starting the workshop. This going to be starting on Monday. We look so very, very forward to working with you. And uh, we'll see you guys then. Have a good night. God bless you.